Hello, welcome along again to, to a, a Microsoft Teams update video. We're going to be talking about what updates we've seen and what's to come. So stay tuned. Hello and welcome along to this video. I'm going to be talking to you about some of these updates that have, have come out in Microsoft Teams and some of them that, that are yet to come. As some of you may be aware, we do have Ignite happening in the next couple of days. So if you are watching this after Ignite, then please don't hold me up against uh, some of the things that I'm predicting that will be announced at Ignite. Um, but if you are watching it before, then it gives you that bit of clue about what might be happening at Ignite, what might be discussed uh, and so on. So some of the updates we're seeing from Microsoft Teams since um, the turn of 2021, um, some of them are some real good things that are coming out. Some of them are still yet to, to come out. So I won't start with the big announcement that, that was announced a, a week or so ago, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was now. I won't start with, with that one. I'm going to start with some of the other ones. So announcement that, that was um, brought out recently was approvals and being able to do approvals within Microsoft Teams. I spoke at an event very, very recently about um, the approvals and setting approvals using Power Automate and SharePoint and Teams and so on and using adaptive cards. But Microsoft now made this easier for us and we can now do approvals through the approval app within Microsoft Teams. Real quick way of triggering an approval process rather than sending someone an email saying, do you agree? Can I get your request on this and so on? Gives us that bit of, of audit trail around um, that's action in something and approving a process. Um, you can attach documentation to an approval, but it's not quite there just yet with the full ins and outs of how that works. So using Power Automate to create the, these automations and, and approvals through that still for me is a better way of doing it, but you do have that quick way of signaling approvals through the, the, the uh, Microsoft Teams approval app. Another thing that, that changed very recently was around meeting settings and our chat moderation. So we can now change how people interact with the chat within meetings. So we can turn off um, pre-meetings uh, and, and post-meeting chat and just have it during the meeting. Um, so, so we can customize that now. Real good one for education because I know a lot of teachers out there who have been doing the remote teaching have been struggling with students triggering off chats and so on after the meeting has finished. So it's a, a good one, good one for you there guys on that chat moderation in, in meetings. Another little update to meetings is around reactions. And this one's quite quite a little fun one to, to have in a meeting. And it's, we're starting to use it more and more with meetings we're having. It's giving it that quick thumbs up or, or that, that love hat, that like, um, that, that you're acknowledging something. Another update that, that's come out is around adding a shared calendar to a team. And when this one got announced, I was really excited about this one dropping because I was thinking, this is fantastic. We're going to be able to add in this shared calendar. We're going to be able to interact with a calendar outside of Teams and Outlook, but also in our team space to give visibility of meetings, actions, events, and so on. I have been a little bit disappointed by this one. Um, so the update is great. Fantastic. We can add that shared calendar into a team. But I'm yet to find a way of extracting that calendar out. So outside of our team's environment and using that calendar um, in Outlook, for instance. So if you are having someone that's managing a group calendar, they can add events to it. that don't necessarily need to be meetings or maybe they're meetings in person. Within Teams, when we're adding that shared calendar, it's a calendar that sits in our channel associated to our team. But the actual calendar events are for channel meetings. So if you add a new calendar event, it is a channel meeting. If you add a channel meeting to the particular channel you have the calendar attached to as a tab, then it does add it as a channel meeting. We can't add in anything else to this calendar. For me, that's a massive frustration around shared calendars, but hopefully that will come. A lot like Microsoft updates, they tend to release something and then work on it and build on it and give us that extra functionality we all want. I have gone into the 365 groups associated to a team and SharePoint sites to, to try and unpick and dig out that calendar, but I'm yet to find it. So if you're watching this and you've managed to do that, please again, drop a comment, let me know how you've done it because I would love to know how we can interact with this calendar outside of our team space. But for those of you that do schedule lots of channel meetings, um, it's a great way of 
bringing up those channel meetings into a, a calendar and giving people a visual view of all the channel meetings you have going. So it's good for that. One that's come missed by many is around history in Teams. So we're able now to see our history of where we've been in Teams. Very much like an internet history and um, works in a similar way within Teams. It, it, if you go into the top left corner, you have the um, back and forward arrows in, in that top left hand corner of your Teams application. So your installed version of Teams. If you hover over that and leave your mouse, it then brings down a drop down of previous things. So you can revert back to a chat you've been in or, or to a team. Um, because that's been a frustration with people using Teams. You'll be in your team channel, you'll be composing a message or maybe working on a document in your team's file space. And then someone sends you a chat, you'd open up your chat, chat to them. Then you'd go back into Teams and it wouldn't always remember where you were last left off. So you'd go into your team, back to your channel and so on and navigate back through. We're now in our history menu of our back and forward buttons. We can hover over that and it brings down that drop down, and we're able to, to, to interact with that history of things we've been to in Teams. So just on things that have come out and have dropped, um, a real big one is around Microsoft Viva. So I'm sure you're all well aware again of the news around this. There's been lots of blog posts by people. Um, I myself has co have contributed to blog posts around um, Viva and I'll add that into um, the link below on this video. Um, and there's been loads of videos around it as well on YouTube, which is why I sort of held back from, from doing it because I myself have had to do some digging to try and find out. So I'm sure many of you out there saw the Viva announcement thought, brilliant, this, this looks really good, exciting, but what is it? What is Microsoft Viva? And a lot of us were, were at, that, at that stage where we've thought, well, we've seen Insights, Insights was coming, we, we've seen connections, we've seen the, the other aspects of it. But for me, it's great, it's that bringing it all together and Again, as Microsoft likes to do, it's what's going to come next? What's going to build off the back of, of these tool sets that they're giving us now um, through the, the, the Viva branding as such? So I know Connections is a great one. Looking forward to that dropping. And Topics, fantastic stuff. Being able to highlight like, those key bits of information to people. Learn. Again, I've been doing a lot of stuff with, with creating SharePoint sites uh, and using them as hubs in, in Microsoft Teams by creating a learning environment within there. So I'm really excited to see what, what the Viva Learn enables us to do with SharePoint and so on. And then Insights, which is bringing up my analytics and my work um, analytics into, um, into Teams and, and giving us that visibility of it. So again, really excited to say we've already got the insights if you are a minor analytics user so there's already an aspect of, of insights in there and um, like i say i'll drop a link to the blog post where you can find out more information around um, microsoft viva okay so as i said um microsoft ignite is very very close to happening uh lots of excitement around ignite because usually when big things get announced it's a real big microsoft event where when teams is usually at the forefront in the, the past couple of Ignites with big updates. My predictions for, for this is Viva is going to be a big part of, of, of those announcements and workshops and so on. Still going to be lots around remote working. Um, I think it's going to be a big aspect around frontline workers as well and interacting with teams. Um, but just so, some of the updates that, that are going to be shown or, or, or maybe not maybe not shown at Ignite but are coming in the next month or so. Um, one of them is meeting recaps and I don't know why this hasn't come out already I don't know on previous videos I spoke about um, breakout rooms and how we wait such a long time for that but it seems like we've been waiting for meeting recaps as well for, for quite some time I know uh, at the last Ignite there was the, the big thing around the new meeting experience with all these new funky solutions tools uh, and so on around the meeting some of those have dropped some of them will come out around like together mode and such. But the meeting recap, it isn't there yet. And I'm really excited to see the meeting recap because I think this is when we can really take that meeting experience to that next level. So when our meeting's finished, we've got that one place we can go to. We can pick up the documents. We can pick up the videos, transcripts, uh, and so on. So I'm really looking forward to, to the meeting recap part. Again, something that's been announced a long time ago and we're still yet to see it is a new file sharing experience. So interacting with our files and teams, there has been some minor um, adjustments to, to, to those already in teams, but Microsoft are talking about a, a new file sharing experience. A big one, and I, I say this is a big one, because for me this, this is great stuff and great news, 
is Microsoft Teams meetings are going to be expanding how the, the capacity of a meeting. So this is going to be expanding to 20,000 attendees. So we're able to have a Teams meeting with up to 20,000 attendees. You might be thinking, wow, my meetings are bad enough when I have 10, 15, 20 people here, and everyone's trying to over talk it and so on. 20,000 is going to be an absolute nightmare. Well, just, just to, to give you a bit of information around it is that up to a thousand people, you're going to be able to have a meeting and have interaction. Over a thousand people, that's where it's going to be called like a, a read-only version of the meeting. So if you've used Microsoft Live Events previously, you'll know live events is a way of broadcasting information where you have um, a producer to produce a live event, then have presenters and then attendees. Attendees can interact with the presenters or producers in any way apart from for a Q&A aspect. So, and attendees can't interact with each other in any way at all. So this, um, I'm going to call it Teams webinar. So Teams webinars are going to allow us to have 20,000 attendees in a read-only manner. So again, they're not going to be able to interact with each other. They're not going to be able to interact with a the presenter. There's going to be no chat. There's going to be no um, chance to come off mute, um, no webcams and so on. So it's in a read-only type of, of aspect here. With the, the 20,000 attendees, though, I have an inkling that there's going to be a Q&A aspect coming to it. So this, if the Q&A aspect does come to these webinar um, functionality, then the Q&A aspect is going to be available in normal Teams meetings. I hope. Don't quote me on that, but I hope. Which is, again, is going to transform the way we, we can do things in Teams meetings. When If you're using Teams for delivering training, for instance, that chat can get bogged down with lots of, of, of um, questions, but also a great space for interacting. Sometimes we miss those questions because there is interaction going on. If there's a dedicated Q&A access within a Teams meeting, fantastic. And I can see that coming because if we're going for 20,000 people being in a meeting, so a webinar, um, then they're going to need some kind of interaction with people um, within that space. So hopefully Q&A will be coming within there. Just on that Teams webinars, um, not sure if it's called that, but I'm going with it. Teams webinars, there is going to be an attendee registration page. Microsoft Bookings has been a place where people have been creating uh, attendee registration pages where people can book onto events and meetings and so on. So I'm guessing it's going to be adapting the kind of look of that or, or, or using some aspect of that. But it's going to be an attendee registration page where people can sign up and join that webinar through that registration. Brilliant move, Microsoft. Well done. Something we, we, we hasn't been cried for and been asked for a lot because we've been using live events. Um, but it's a step in the right direction. I can see it's making a huge impact in the way um, companies and organizations do those bigger scale um, events and so on. And just the, just on live events, live events isn't going anywhere. So if you are a, a, an active user of live events, don't worry, live events are still going to stay there. Um, you're just going to be able to also use Teams webinars, Teams meetings and live events and working out which, which one would be suited best for you. Another aspect that, that's been announced in the message center recently is new lobby settings. So this is where we're going to um, Teams meetings are going to be invite only. Currently, when you schedule a Teams meeting, it creates a web address. So it creates a, a, a public web address that if anyone has access to that web address, they can click on the link and they can join that meeting. Rewind back to, to the beginning of, of how people started working more remotely. There was a big concern about another third party um, meeting application that ended up with people dropping in. It was called bombing. So they bombed into these meetings, did whatever in that meeting and then would leave. There's a bit of concern around Teams because Teams again, public um, website address that anyone could join that. Obviously you could put lobby settings in place so you have to approve who joins it and, and, and who you don't allow into the meeting. But still that aspect of someone putting in a guest name um, and gaining access to that meeting because they just put their name in, they get in. Um, pretty simple, really. But new lobby settings are coming, so unless they're actually an invited to the meeting, they can't join the meeting. Again, not sure why it wasn't there before, but Mark's our step in the right direction, a bit more around security. We can make our meeting environments a lot safer and, and um, allow who we want to allow in those meetings. 
something that I think I should mention um, that did cause a bit of an uproar. You may not have heard it. It was announced in the message center and um, Mark's sort of backtracked on this one. Uh, it's around Teams Pro. Not sure what happened here, but someone I think messed up maybe. Um, but there was an announcement in the, the Microsoft 365 admin center in the message center around Teams Pro being announced. This caused a bit of an uproar around forums and um, LinkedIn, Twitter and so on around people saying, what's Teams Pro? What do I need to pay for now for, for enabling Teams Pro? What's it going to give me uh, and so on? A couple of days later, Microsoft did another message say Teams Pro and no changes in costing. It's A3, E3 licensing to, to enable Teams Pro and so on. Again, didn't really give as much indication of what it is, what it means. I've heard it from the grapevine that the Teams Pro isn't necessarily a thing Microsoft are pushing. It's not coming out anytime soon. Not much details around on the internet, but I think someone messed up, announced this too early, and they've had to rate it in a bit around this. Don't know the full details, so I'm not gonna speculate around what I think uh, and so on, or what I've read. Again, plenty of blogs out there, go off and, and search around that, but I thought it's worth noting that about Teams Pro, um, watch this space, I guess, to see what happens there. One final thing to, to talk about is, is Skype for Business. If you're a Skype for Business user, then you, if it's the cloud version, then that does become end of life on the 31st of July. If you have it um, on premise, you do get to use it for a bit longer. I know some organizations out there are still using Skype for Business for telephony, um, but just warn 31st of July, end of life for Skype for Business um, cloud version. Did a, a, a webinar on this last week around Skype for Business. Again, I'll pop it down in the, the description below around um, a link to that so you can go and watch that and find out how you could roll out Teams if you're a Skype for Business user and so on. But I wonder if you'd be watching this video if you're not using Microsoft Teams. But I'll link it in there just in case you, you do want to check that out. Okay, so, so that's my quick roundup then of what um, updates we've seen recently, what's to come. I will um, be keeping an eye on, on things in the comments because I know I've, I've popped some things out there to ask you some questions. Be great to see what what, um, what updates you're excited for, where you things might be might be used, webinars. Love to hear your discussions around that. Um, so please do comment below to, to add that in. Do give a thumbs up on, on, on the video, subscribe to the channel and all that whatnot and so on. Um, but if, if you, your ad's going to Ignite, do enjoy it. Great to, to catch up on LinkedIn and Twitter to find out what it is you're excited for around Ignite, what, what you're, you're doing at Ignite. Um, and until next time, stay safe, everyone.